Hello and welcome to Genius Tea Time with Mindy Trimble. Thank you all so much for joining us and to Mindy and I'm looking forward to her words of wisdom. Um, described by her students as the bubble wrap of life and college coaching, Mindy Trimble is the creator of the Majorly Determined Method that helps students pop with fun, stress-relieving ideas for navigating their educational journeys. She then makes sure they don't crack under pressure while creating personality-filled applications that get put into the yes pile in her Acceptance Accelerator program. When not singing her students' praises, you can find this UC Berkeley grad in the SoCal sunshine with her husband, twin boys, and German Schiegel, or busting out soprano arias with her own classically trained operatic voice. Welcome, Mindy. Would you like to tell us about I Am Aria? Yes. So I Am Aria is a nonprofit that is dedicated toward uh, offering teens uh, creative outlets to manage depression and anxiety. The nonprofit is run by an author and colleague of mine uh, by the pen name LB Ann, uh, and it's run out of Florida. And right now, uh, there are two components to I Am Aria. One is a summer internship in which actually uh, one of the members here today of the Tea Time uh Tea Time's daughter was involved in this summer. So it's a paid internship for young people to learn the publishing industry. And then the other arm is uh, that right now they're going into schools in Florida with a program to help students journal and uh, create art projects to uh, channel their feelings and promote uh, teen mental health and wellness. So thank you so much for those of you who donated. Uh, you're supporting uh, I Am Aria. And uh, Laura, do you want to say something about Opulent Mobility also? Yes, um, Opulent Mobility is an annual uh, international exhibit and that asks artists to reimagine disability as opulent and powerful, which is not something you usually associate with disability, but it's about celebrating it instead of treating it as something to ignore or look over or to fear, treating it as something as wonderful and full of potential. So this, any funds from this help go toward adding American Sign Language to the website and to some of the programming so they can be enjoyed by deaf audiences. All right, well, let's get started, shall we? Right. So um, now if I, you know, if we, we look here, can we really get a good picture what if we're assaulted with words on page, right? Can we really get a good picture of the student from this black text on a white background? Not so much, right? We have a lot of accomplishments, we have a lot of statistics, but unfortunately, we don't really get a good picture of the student themselves. And this is exactly how so many smart, talented, qualified students feel for months during the college application process. They feel just like text on a page, numbers on a page. And, you know, not just during the process itself, but during the waiting game, waiting for the answers to come in. And, you know, it's not really about the stats themselves. I don't want you to get lost in that there. This is really just an example. But students as digital lists of grades and activities uh, make it really hard to stand out, especially when According to the National Center of Education Statistics, the number of applications submitted to colleges has increased over 150% over the past 20 years, while high school sizes and graduation class sizes have stayed relatively the same. Not only that, early decision application deadlines have become the new regular decision deadline shortening the timeline for seniors to get everything done, increasing the angst of the entire application process. So for those of you who don't know, November 1st is a really big deadline and students are pressured to meet that deadline so that they can find out before they leave for holiday break, whether they got into their top choices. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a whole, whole new thing. And meanwhile, college acceptance rates continue to decline. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is just a snapshot. I actually updated this today. As you can see, it's from 2022 and 2023. We've seen, you know, record low acceptance rates. Ivy League acceptance rates are dropping. So what does all this mean? Well, 
what it means is that it's harder than ever to stand out because the competition in the American college game is the steepest it's ever been. And -hmm. since no one is really talking about new and effective ways to stand out to colleges, no one's really winning this game. Not the colleges who each have mysterious and opaque and different definitions of what holistic admissions evaluation really means. Certainly not high schools or counselors who are trying to help decode that language for their students while managing their increasingly heavy caseloads as their staff numbers get smaller and the number of students stays the same or increases. But especially and most importantly, not you, parents and students and families. So the question is, if you're a high school student or parent, what can you do right now to feel like you're winning the college prep game and actually have a chance of getting into a best fit college that you're excited to go to? In order to get to and through college successfully, you've got to do high school differently. And not just differently, majorly differently. Emphasis on the major. Okay, so what I had. <laughs> so listen, because even though I'll be the first to tell you, it ultimately doesn't matter what you end up majoring in, spending time now deciding what you wanna put down as your intended college major is the easiest way to pick middle school and high school classes and activities that make sense for you and your student, craft a great college personal statement and supplemental essays when that time comes and radiate off the page to college admissions reps in bright, full technicolor. And the best part is that none of this is set in stone, but you and your student get to experience a structure that's more similar to a well-carved path anyway. Now, until our society is ready to make massive changes to the college application system and the ranking system that are so desperately needed, my mentoring mission is 100% focused on students by getting them to pop, not only with possibilities for their educational pathways, but also with insights about themselves. It's also focused on them by popping in regularly to keep them on track toward their majorly determined goals. And finally, it's making sure that they don't pop under application pressure, which is why, as Laura told you, one student started referring to me as their college rep prep bubble wrap, which is obviously a description that I fully embrace and own, literally. So besides, you know, being someone that is willing to wear packing material in order to make a point, who am I? Okay. Uh, well, I am someone who also used to wear pantyhose. And pantyhose are actually kind of how Mindy Trimble mentoring got started. Let me explain. Over 15 years ago, I started out in the higher education industry as a test prep and academic coach, primarily SAT and ACT, while pursuing my graduate degree in opera performance. That's right, opera performance. Uh, and I would love to demo for you, but Zoom microphones do not love demonstrations of operatic high notes. <laughs> and while I was mastering my audition skills, and, you know, going around and mastering my technique and learning how to stand out amidst a sea of same Z sopranos, I discovered that I could weave insights from those experiences and my performance background into my students' college prep and essay coaching sessions. And then one day I had an audition during which the apparently way too old elastic waistband of my nylons gave out mid aria, right? Mid-aria, I feel it start to slide, causing them ever so slowly to slide right down my legs. Now, thankfully, I did not end up looking uh, quite like that. I did not, I had a little, my dress was hopefully a little more stylish, but uh, I did have to awkwardly shuffle right out of that audition room and surprising to no one, I did not get a call back, but it was a wake up call. So in that moment, I could really, really empathize hearing my students' voices, feeling their worries about the whole college application process. 
you know, and I realized that the singer hustle and grind had caused, had been causing something else to fall down even lower than my pantyhose. So I realized that it was my spirit that was getting kind of crushed by the whole process. And I said, okay, well, what, what's lifting it right now? Yes, seeing my students get into their top colleges, but more than that, it was how I was joining them on the ride of their own self-discovery. So kind of feeling and hearing in their voices after we would get, you know, get through some, some really solid essays, you know, them developing a kind of self-assurance that was more important really than any grade test score or ultimately college acceptance, that really made my spirit sing. And so that was how it began. So that's how I decided to focus my work with students. I directed it away from test prep and subject tutoring into crafting both custom high school plans and college applications that help students become the kind of thinkers, movers, and shakers they want to be in the world. And the best part is no pantyhose necessary ever. <laughs> so, um, you know, let's kind of get into it, right? So if we know that we want to get to and through college successfully, we've got to do high school differently. So let's move on to how we actually do this whole majorly determined thing. <laughs> And yes, someday I promise we will uh, we'll have a demo. So I'm gonna walk you through some steps of my 4D method. We don't have time to do it all today, but I wanna give you a glimpse of how I work with students and how you can work with your students to you know, promote this discovery, ease and joy into the college prep process. So step one is dig. Now this is a very time consuming step for me. And it should be for you. This is primarily what you should be doing, you know, between seventh through ninth grade, if that's where your students are. It's really about discovering, you know, what matters to a student, what they love, what they're good at, uh, what they're strong in, even if they don't necessarily love it. And I do this through a combination of science-backed aptitude tests, like U Science and 16 Personalities, which is based on Myers Briggs, but also uh, DISC assessments and the BIA stands for Values and in Action Institute on Character. Now, I believe U Science is the only one that actually costs money on its own, which you can go and do. Um, but the other three are all free, and you can kind of dig around and find. Um, there are free and paid versions, but so you can you can dig around and find those so that you can start your own digging. Uh, but since that takes a lot of time. I just wanted to kind of view a glimpse. So I do a lot of that when I first meet students. What makes them tick? What's their purpose? What's their passion? And then we move on to step two, discover. So in the discovery, you know, part of our work, uh, we really kind of dig in. So I'd like to ask you, how many of you, and you can answer in the chat, or unmute yourself if you're feeling, feeling it. How many of you have heard it's okay to be undecided in high school? You know, when it came to your college major, maybe you were told that, maybe you've said it. It's okay. I used to say it, I don't anymore. <laughs> but if you've heard it, if you've said it, I would love to see. Yep, I'm seeing some answers coming in the chat. Yes, heard that. Right, absolutely. Now, it's reassuring. Right? There's so much going on as teens. Their executive functioning skills are all over the place. Their brains are still forming. So hearing like you don't have to have it all figured out. That's a different message, right? But it comes across, it's okay to be undecided and you don't have to have it all figured out. Get conflated, all right? So unfortunately, the other thing that happens with that statement is that it's perceived by most aspiring college students as, you don't really have to think about or spend any effort figuring out possible college majors until you get there. And that second statement is costing college students and parents time, money, happiness, and confidence in both the short and long term. Now, I'm not saying that college students have to have it figured out. They don't. But they can be in an active state of I'm figuring it out mode. And they need to start doing it a little differently than we did. So when most students say, you know, 
I'm undecided, um, or I don't know what I want to major in. What they're actually saying is, I don't know enough about study paths and what study paths exist for me in college today. They're saying, I don't even know what majors are out there besides the subjects I take in school and maybe what my parents majored in and my friend's parents majored in and, oh, some, some, my siblings and some siblings of friends. <laughs> That's it. Uh, they're also saying, I don't know how the things I like about different high school subjects could fit together. And as a result, this well-intended phrase of it's okay to be undecided is doing thousands and thousands of our students more harm than good because it's well-intentioned and students, parents can help, but typically the parents that I meet, you know, they explain to me that the college conversation keeps getting sidelined longer than they want it to in service of more immediate goals and pressing concerns, right? Grades are important. Absolutely. They weigh the most in the application pie. However, as we've seen through, if any of you, I'm assuming some of you have seen on TikTok or Instagram, these, you know, these reels and videos of, you know, a stu it, you know, it'll be an image of a, of a college campus background and across the screen, it'll say like, 1550 SAT, 4.8 GPA, valedictorian. And then it goes on with image of image of college campus where that student was rejected from. And so it's causing us, causing us all this extra angst. But I'm here to tell you that when the college conversation keeps getting sidelined, right? That unfortunately is what can happen because there is a big disconnect. So if parents do bring it up or push the conversation, sometimes, you know, a lot of a lot of parents of my students will say, you know, I get called a nag, I don't want to ruin my relationship with my student, or I've received too many eye rolls, I can't keep doing this, can you please help? So others just feel ill-equipped to guide them through this overwhelming sea of college information. Okay, so there's kind of two things going on. And students are then left believing that exploring their major and career decisions is something that might be nice, but it isn't quite as critical as getting the good grades or the test scores, although with test optional, that's changed somewhat, or extracurricular involvement for getting into a good college. But as, but as we're seeing, that's just not true anymore. There's, there's got to be something different. So students are told they just need to do the best they possibly can at the hardest, highest level they can so they can keep their options open. But in my opinion, that's a throw spaghetti at the wall approach that burns all of us out. And another thing I like to tell students is like, you know, the expression, shoot for the moon so you land among the stars. When it comes to maxing out your high school schedule and trying to try to be as perfect as you can in all of the things, being well-rounded, that's a, what a lot of us were told to, you got to be well-rounded. It is a recipe for rocket launch level burnout really early on in high school. And so what are we setting up? What are we setting them up for in college? So, you know, they answer, I don't know, and that's what they want to do, study or be in college and beyond. And I haven't met a single student that feels good when they say that answer. So again, it's 100% okay to not know. It, but it's not okay to let students go on thinking that they're powerless to start figuring out right now. You know, robbing them of making connections between their current lives and the lives they envision leading. Because here's the thing, college is definitely different for them than it was for us. And none of us know that much about what we don't know, right? I love this pie chart. So again, this is what we don't we what we don't know that we don't know about college majors. So in my experience, you know, college bound students get overwhelmed by the 1800 plus available majors at over 5000 colleges and universities in the United States. So I am going to do something fun with all of you. And I am going to pretend that the Adams family has hired me to help Wednesday Adams uh, figure out what college and major she's going to study after she graduates from Nevermore Academy. Now, some of you may be like, whoa, where is this going? Well, 
it's almost October people. So, and we're a spooky, we love spooky season in my house. So I had to, I had to do this Wednesday Adams case study and I love the show on Netflix. So if you're not familiar, it was, it's, you know, the newest reboot of the decades old television show. I think it started out as a comic. My husband's here. He might be able to tell you in the chat, uh, but it hasn't been rebooted since the nineties. Okay. So um, we're going to look th through the lens of Wednesday Adams to show you how you might investigate majors and discover something really cool that could change your whole mindset around high school. So in it, Wednesday goes to Nevermore Academy and all sorts of fun ensues. I refuse to spoil it. So. Yeah, let's just pretend Morticia and Gomez have hired me to help Miss Wednesday, you know, make it, make that transition to college, okay? So now the family has a lot of what they like to call odd investments in spooky and strange uh, pieces of property and businesses, et cetera. So they have their own family business. So that's one component, okay? And then while I'm digging around with Wednesday, I find out that she's got a, an assortment of interesting skills, passions, and hobbies. She speaks English, German, and Spanish, plays the cello, is very interested in creative writing and has a novel she's working on, but it's a little too macabre for a lot of the mainstream. She's also interested in history, uh, fencing. She raises spiders, and she's also pretty curious about amateur detective work and ballet. So she's got a lot. There's a lot on that resume. And of course, Lest we forget, there's her obvious fascination with all things morbid and creepy, okay? And she has decided, though, after going away to boarding school, that since her family lives in New Jersey, she wants to go to Rutgers. That's the only college she's looking at, all right? Okay, fine. Fine, Wednesday, we will look at everything that Rutgers has to offer, okay? So let's take a look. So based on those interests, Wednesday says, well, no, I don't really, I don't really know. I'm, you know, I'm too busy raising my spiders and in fencing club to really focus on this, but I guess I can major in business or like a science like bio or chemistry or maybe like psychology or English. Fun fact, these are the three buckets that pretty much every single student of mine falls in. Now, maybe sub out, I got, I got a lot of engineering hopefuls too, so we might sub out bio or chem with engineering, but this is pretty much it. And I would say the majority of my students are falling into the business or bio or chem side. Uh, so anybody, anybody have some a student that does not fall into one of these general categories, or if you want to chime in and let me know, like, yes, business, business student hopeful here, STEM hopeful, psych or English or social sciences, I would love to see that in the chat. So I'll check that in just a moment. So, you know, I'm, I'm with Wednesday and I go, okay, Wednesday, let's see, let's, let's, let's discover what there is to discover so that we can do the rest of your time at Nevermore a little differently and make you super competitive in your college applications. So let's look at what Rutgers has to offer. Oh, none. Oh, I would love to know, Olga, you let me know uh, what, um, maybe what your student is interested in. Um, STEM hopeful. Okay, so I go with Wednesday and we start digging around the Rutgers website to discover what there is to discover. And lo and behold, as I'm, you know, helping Wednesday discover how to read a college website, learn basic college, I call it college knowledge 101, basic college terms, we see all sorts of stuff open up. I'm teaching her about majors she's never heard of. Um, I'm showing her that when you dig into and start investing in college majors, there's all sorts of options and concentrations that you may, may have never known existed. You can plan a major and minor approach, or you can start investigating dual degree programs where you might stay in college an extra one, two, or three years to get a bachelor's plus master's, kind of like a combo deal. Uh, oh, film industry, great. So, so as you can see, this is what I kind of would pick for Wednesday based on what I know about her. So for business, one might not, you know, a student might totally glance over a major called American Studies. What the heck is American Studies? But instead of stopping and asking themselves, what is that major? 
I can't, I can't possibly think of what that is. Let me click on it and read it. They just scan on down to the B section to business. So American studies is one of my favorite interdisciplinary majors to show students because it literally is a cross section of history, uh, sociology, communications, uh, anthropology, uh, business classes. It's pulling from all different departments across a campus. And there are some specific American studies classes itself to help students become more savvy about doing anything or pursuing any job in America. So if I have a student that is interested in pursuing business, I say, hey, why don't you look at this? Have a look, see if it's interesting to you. See if it's combining other subjects in school you really like or are good at. Because let me tell you what business schools don't often see coming across their MBA application desk, American studies majors. And the beauty of, now let, we'll go through a couple other ones. The beauty of choosing a major to apply to undergrad that not many students choose is that by virtue of the fact that you're choosing something unusual, you have to justify and explain it. And it's in the justification and explanation in your essays that you stand out naturally because you've already thought about it. And so your radiation factor already you know, gets multiplied. Now, more on that. I'm not saying to game the system and I'm more on that in a second. Some other majors that students have never heard of that I have had the pleasure of exposing them to are data science. Um, and Rutgers has this interesting societal impact option. This is, you know, we live in an age of massive amounts of cloud data. So this is how to manipulate that both uh, mathematically and visually and represent it. Uh, entrepreneurship as a minor, that, tapping into that family business angle. With biology or chemistry, biomathematics is a specific, it's an actual major at Rutgers and it deals with uh, projection of related to population issues and pandemics. So we know that uh, Wednesday would be interested in uh, death and disease there. Uh, also chemistry, forensic chemistry is an option there. And so that ties into her amateur detective work as well as um, criminal justice over there under psychology. Um, entomology, she loves spiders. Now technically entomology is the study of insects, but that's the foray into arachnology, which uh, is the study of spiders, which is basically one of my greatest fears. So that is not something uh, I know that much about, but I would help her study. Uh, and then um, also cognitive science and neuroscience. I, I still, now I deal in majors and I still have to look up the difference between cognitive and science, cognitive science and neuroscience every time I'm working with a student for whom this might be of interest. And cognitive science is the way we process information, whereas neuroscience is the actual study of brain activity. And then psychology or English, again, let's kind of drill down. We know that she wants to be a writer or is already writing. So perhaps comparative literature, she already speaks three languages. So that would be uh, really maximizing her skills and then minoring in creative writing. There's also medieval studies or possibly a minor in critical intelligence if she decides to go work for the government as a super spy. So as you can see, you know, it that that I can do literally after the digging, it can do it in one session. We can start getting this whole smorgasbord of options. So, you know, to sum it up, in order to do high school differently and get to college successfully, we first have to accept and embrace what we don't know we don't know. And it all it takes to begin is a simple Google search. Okay, so moving on. To step three. So step three of my 4D method is designing. So once, you know, I or you have worked with your student to discover what else is out there uh, and you, well, first you've dug, dug into what they love and what they're good at. You've discovered, you know, how to navigate these college websites in a playful, fun way. Like, what is, what is this major? That's a weird title. Let me just kind of investigate. Then you get to the designing part. And designing is really about, you know, in terms of my work with students, this is where I will 
you know, Wednesday only had one school in mind, but for other students, they've got all 5,000 colleges at their disposal, maybe, or maybe they know, okay, I wanna stay on this coast or that coast, or maybe I wanna study internationally. So we start to build a baby college list at this point, just based on what they love. And so, let me, let me tell you how this relates to your taxes, okay? How many of you in the room say every year, oh, next year is gonna be the year that I get organized right away. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay organized all year long. I'm gonna file my receipts. I'm gonna create a Dropbox with all this stuff. I'm gonna be super organized so that when I get to tax season, it's all streamlined. Anybody, just me? Just me. The bottom line is that the earlier you start, <laughs> it's relatable. The bottom line is that the earlier you start this process in a playful exploratory way, truthfully, that that intention is actually going to serve you, right? You know, and you don't have to, again, every little bit you do every year is going to, you know, make that process at the end of the four years that much easier. Just as if any of you have had some luck tweaking some behavioral practices around your taxes, you know, like, okay, I, I got this new software. I'm a little bit more organized there, but I didn't quite do this thing. It's the same thing with college prep. So starting wherever you are, whether that's seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th grade is a time to start playfully exploring and having conversations around what uh, you're interested in so that you can start designing college lists based not on the US News and World Report rankings, but based on what is important to student themselves. So now let me tell you, we focused, we were looking at Rutgers majors, but let me, you know, since we're, I'm in California, not all of you are in California, but since I'm in California, I had to pull a clip from the LA Times here. Now this is from 2021. And, um, you know, this was, that was a year where a record number of rejections of California residents um, was registered. And so that's where this quote starts. It's frustrating. But what I want to draw your attention to is in blue, majors matter, they say. At UC Irvine, admissions officers had to review a record 108,000 applications for freshman spots. Almost half of the students applied to just six of 85 majors, with biological sciences the top choice, selected by nearly 12,000 applicants. Other popular majors were business administration, nursing science, computer science, and psychology. So some of you may be asking, well, that makes sense. You know, those types of uh, majors, you know, you can clearly see a direct line between the major and a future job. But I would posit that choosing a major where you're either enveloping other disciplines makes you a more facile, flexible thinker. And in so doing, it exposes you to potential jobs in a variety of disciplines where you can get the internship experience that anybody needs in any major in order to get a job out of college and succeed. So really just focusing on majors that are employable is not really serving the student or helping you win the college game because it's not necessarily going to inspire a student to pick classes and activities to help them design a high school path leading to a college future that they're going to be excited about. Another one I want to show you uh, is this program at UC Berkeley or these two programs rather. So at UC Berkeley, there are two computer science majors. Very few people know this. There is one in, uh, it's the electrical engineering and computer science major, it's called EECS. And I'm a proud Cal grad. So I knew a lot of EECS majors in the College of Engineering. This is a very impacted and extremely difficult program to get into. And you must list it on your application. You cannot get into it once you're there. And it's appropriate for people who want an engineering education. Then you have 
a computer science major in the College of Letters and Science. But I've highlighted that blue statement down there. There is no difference in the CS course content between the Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Art programs. It's mainly in engineering versus social science. So that's kind of think of that as the flavor. So one has more engineering flavor, one has more social science flavor. In particular, if you have an interest in hardware, you would go the engineering route, whereas anything else, literally anything else that you, your student might be interested in related to computer science, you will be a better fit for the letters and science major. My student Kate, two years ago, didn't know this. We talked about it. It was one of her top choices. She did not get into any of her Ivy League school choices, but she did get into UC Berkeley in the letters and science, computer science major, and is extremely happy. But had we not explored that ahead of time, she would have selected the EECS major and most likely been denied because the acceptance rate is so much lower. So last, uh, last couple things here um, I want to point out is that, you know, the reason it's important to start this digging and discovery early so that you can start designing your list and designing a resume to go out and get real world experiences that support your you know, potential interest uh, pathways is that doing those kind of outside of the box extracurriculars, real world experiences, designing your high school life with those in mind and not just the same tired old community service clubs where you meet one hour a week and don't really do anything but for once a semester is that character matters more than ever. The most recent National Association for College Admissions Consulting survey of college admission practice found that 70% of colleges consider character of considerable or moderate importance in admission. Now, that quote is from a couple of years ago, but I wanted to put the Supreme Court logo on here because in the summer of this year, the Supreme Court struck down the practice of affirmative action in college admissions, which you may or may not know. But in the decision, the justices said, that if a student talks about race in relation to character building activities or experiences, then it can be used as a basis of evaluation. So now more than ever with my students, it is important for us to talk about the character building activities they're engaged in, that are connected to meaningful subjects that they're engaging with. So everything is moving toward a shift in college admissions, toward character-fueled evaluation, and hopefully uh, uh, um, practices. So this brings me to Sammy. This, she's a current student of mine. I started working with her last year in the fall of 10th grade. And when Sammy first came to me, she said, Mindy, I want to I, I want to be pre-med because I, I want to be safe. I want security, I want job security. I want to know that I will always need to have a job. And that is what I want. I said, okay, well, let's, let's start digging. So we started digging. And now Sammy has a college list of schools that are mainly known for having animal science or wildlife conservation and biology degrees. Because as we dug into what really interested her about science, et cetera, we found that really the pattern everywhere in what she feels most connected to, what she wants to do, has to do with animals, animal rescue, and in the environment. And so by figuring that out early in her 10th grade year, Sammy has been able to completely shift how she spends her time in high school. Instead of taking AP Calculus, she's taking AP Bio and AP Psych. And she'll be taking AP Chem because those AP classes make more sense. She also decided to take Physiology as an elective, which she was not really thinking about before because she thought, you know, it's going to help me understand more anatomy. For her extracurriculars, she is looking at not only... Uh, part-time jobs and at vet hospitals and uh, volunteering at local animal shelters. But in the part-time job she had this past summer, she saved up enough to do a summer animal rescue program in Costa Rica. So it's completely turned her entire high school trajectory around. 
making, you know, and she's crafting her story as she's going to her, so that she has compelling application content. Again, she's doing high school differently, which is what you need in order to get to and through college successfully. And so finally, distill. What I mean by distill and what I'm now doing with Sammy is we are just repeating. We are rinsing and repeating, trying something out, reflecting on it, seeing what we like and what we don't like to figure out what is the next step to take. You know, maybe the next step is, you know what, I really like this. I'm all in. Let's start applying for merit-based scholarships or need-based scholarships. Let's start writing the essays now and practicing how to write college application essays before we actually get to the summer before senior year or the fall before senior year. And, you know, that is really, I'm in the thick of it right now with my students and uh, my seniors, right? This is, we are in it. We are writing the essays. And often the most, one of the most frequent questions I get asked is, you know, what, how do you, how does a student stand out? How do they go to the top of the pile? Well, that's where that digging, discovery, and designing comes into play. Because, you know, playing it safe and doing the same old clubs that all of the straight A successful students did before, all of those activities with a very safe and known outcome are not really the students who are going to the top of the pile. So I'm going to remind you again, those videos you see, students that say, oh, I was a valedictorian and I got rejected from everywhere except this one school. My response is, show me your essays. Show me your extracurricular activities. I want to see them. Because, you know, if they're just smart and just involved, you know, interest and involvement is not as great as intention and impact. And it is the students who demonstrate intention and impact that rise up to the top of the pile because they can talk about how they went outside their comfort zones and they took on a risk of a project with an uncertain outcome, okay? And I wanna just mention, this is the last thing, and I'm gonna wrap it up here and open up for questions. I want to highlight a student of mine, Malia. Now, Malia is going to be starting, well, she has started, <laughs> she has started uh, her first year at Davidson College. And Malia is at Davidson College with a merit scholarship worth over $310,000. She has a full ride. Uh, now, Malia started with me in, I think it was actually sixth grade. So I started working with Malia in sixth grade because uh, her parents are both doctors and they were really scared about standardized testing because they had had a terrible time with standardized testing. They said, we don't want our daughter to be afraid of it. So is this too early to start? And I said, no, but we're just gonna make it a game. And we did. And so it was a game. Let's learn this new thing in math that you haven't learned yet. So we so that's what we did for a lot of years until you know she was a, in ninth grade and scoring over 1450 on the SAT. It's like, okay, well, that game, that game's just gonna keep on playing itself because I'm gonna keep learning more math and I'm gonna keep taking the test. Like, okay, what else, what else do we got here, Mindy? And then, um, then the pandemic came and Malia and I, you know, we started digging into some, you know, what are some uncommon projects you can, you can do and things you can explore. And so Malia, um, since she, you know, now had, uh, was, you know, stuck inside a virtual school, um, she said, I gotta do something with my hands. And so she taught herself how to build a bench. She built a bench for a public park in her hometown in Texas. And then Malia got very, very, very life-threateningly sick, very sick. Um, and she didn't have many extracurriculars, but through the throes of her um, health crisis, she said, she told me, Mindy, I remember the work that we did with the Uncommon Project with the bench. And I went back to it. And one of the examples and the paperwork was a student who started a nonprofit. So I decided to start a health nonprofit for the children's hospital in my town to better communicate with the staffers at the other hospitals so that no one has to go through what I went through. 
And so Malia, I told you her parents were doctors, not a lot of financial need in that home. And yet there she is with her full ride. So <clears throat> again, this is a fundraiser, but I would love if you are not on my mailing list, um, I would love you to join. I'm going to pop the link in the chat. Um, and when you do, you can kind of get a summary of all of this um, in my bubble wrapped college planning timeline. So every key milestone, hot tips for maximizing your summer. You know, you've already, you've experienced the sneak peek at the 4D method, but she'll get it again in a recap. Um, it's the next best thing to this actual recording. And, you know, I want you to feel supported and have a stress-free journey. And if you're like, whoa, sign me up. I love this majorly determined thing. This is a screenshot where you can actually sign up. Uh, I'm going to start group classes early next year and you can sign up to uh, get on the wait list. And there's even a box if you wanna do both. And without further ado, thank you so much, Genius Tea Time. Thank you all for supporting Opulent Mobility and I am Aria and I would love to um, take your questions. Like if you have specific questions, if maybe there were things that were coming up for you about your own, uh, your own child, that's what we're here for. Thank you, Kim. Now, Kim, are you, are you the mom of multiples? Are you the triplet mom? No, that's Rebecca. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Becky. Okay. The triplet. And how old are your triplets? Hi. <laughs> you can, oh, almost 16. Right. So you're, yeah, you're in the thick of it. So, so yeah, I mean, 10th grade, this is it. This is the time. So, you know, just kind of exploring, digging around, you know, I love to start. It's like, I don't know where to start. I love starting with just Googling a local college that's nearby that you can drive to, but Googling list of majors at X college and making sure that you actually get that college's website listing of all of them. And just starting there being like, oh, what, what's a major we've never heard of? What's it related to um, as a way to kind of start the conversation? And I know, what about, uh, let's see, Olga or Kim, any, oh, they are, oh, all, all three want to go to NYU? Fabulous. Okay. So, um, oh, just, oh, okay. The girl, oh, so girls and a boy, two girls and a boy. Okay, great. And so, right. So that, there you go. So let's start with NYU. You go to NYU. NYU has some really interesting schools. There is, um, I think it's called the school of, that might be Columbia, but there is a school at NYU, we're getting the name, but it's, it's kind of like a, you can kind of create your own major, but it gives you structure. So you're not entirely loosey goosey creating it, but you kind of have, you know, leeway to mix, uh, disciplines. Um, but that's not always, you know, necessary. You know, I, when, when I have students that are interested, I'm like, okay, can we do it with a major and minor? Can we do it? You know, is it more of an interdisciplinary route or do you want to just like stick with one major so you can maximize time and experiences outside of the classroom? Thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. So you're welcome. Kind of pop that right there. I love it. Um, and but it's easy. It's an easy thing to look up yes. to find out yes. for anybody. And that's kind of fun. Right. Yeah. You just start looking. And isn't it also, I mean, it's also kind of fun. I mean, there are majors that didn't exist three years ago. So every oh, yeah. time I go and look at a list, um, there is a, an abundance of new, like climate sustainability studies majors now that never existed. Uh, my major at UC Berkeley, which was peace and conflict studies, no longer exists, but it has morphed and expanded into a global studies degree. Um, mm -hmm. Are we still recording the Q&A? We are, but we can pause it. But we can pause it. Would you like to? We can do that. Okay. 
Let well, me just, I'll, well, I'll wait for, for her response, but for that, because I think there's two people in here who are film industry, interested in the film industry. And, um, I have to shout out, uh, I think my husband is still here. Uh, Scott Trimble, I have to shout him out. Uh, so Scott actually also went to Cal, but we were not there at the same time. He was four years ahead of me, but, um, oh yeah, no, it's a, we're okay to record the Q and A unless. Okay, cool. But, um, so in terms of the film industry, I think my husband would be the first to say, make, it really doesn't. So this is it. So your major matters at this point in the process, but once you get to a college campus, it really doesn't. And it doesn't matter what you major, you know, what you leave with because, um, my husband is an archeology span major. I think, I hope I remember that right. Archeology, span <laughs> but he started out as pre-med was interested in anthropology. He kind of wanted to be Indiana Jones, but then figured out, Oh, I actually just want to like work in the Indiana Jones movie is in the movie industry. And so he just jumped into like, he poured himself into a major he was interested in while getting the practical experience outside of class. And so one of the things I want to stress to parents is if your student is happy learning and their, their intellectual vitality and curiosity is ignited, and if they're happy in their classroom, then they're going to have that much more energy and vitality to pour into the practical steps and experiences that are going to get them farther ahead in, you know, getting that job experience. So anthropology with an emphasis on historical archaeology. So, so, you know, it's interesting because really I, I'm on this one woman mission to make sure that people know that this is a lens that helps focus and add a lot of ease and joy to the entire high school and college prep planning process. But then once you get to college, just it's really all about doing the thing that makes your brain the happiest and allows you to just just em embrace learning because it's a unique time in your life where you get to do that, where you don't have, you know, other kinds of responsibilities and things. So. Oh, two minors. Oh, I forgot. He's the overachiever here. <laughs> Scandinavian mythology and dramatic arts. So, so yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, and I was a peace and conflict studies major at Cal and I minored in French. So legit Indiana Jones. <laughs> he was really, I mean, really, that was it. I think that was his model. But hey, now he is a location scout in the film industry. The reason I brought that up is that he is a location scout in the film industry and he's been working in his field for over 20 years. So, you know, it's really all about getting that practical experience as soon as you can. And also fun fact, since there are some film, film interested folks, majoring in film is not always the best route for students. Uh, it is very, very expensive. You know, we think, well, wait, if they if they want to go in the film industry, they should major in film. Not so, Ranger Joe, not necessarily. Um, it really depends on the student. And that's where like that digging to figure out and doing the assessments to figure out like, what are their strengths? Um, not everybody is going to be a director or has the skill set to be a director. And really, if they get right down to it, they maybe not are even interested. Once they know what a director does and what they're good at, it might not really be what they want. And so film studies can be an extremely expensive major because there's so much additional expense that students have to front in order to produce the projects they need to graduate. Uh, religious studies with minor in cultural anthropology. Ooh. Well, I feel like, I feel like Kim and my husband could go on a, a dig like tomorrow and, and, you know, have we, you know, there's a new movie there. <laughs> so I think you're all Indiana Jones. Um, hopefuls here. <laughs> That's awesome. A history major at US, oh, USSC or USC? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, again, and it's all about, it's all about just, pursuing what, you know, light, you know, a student, if they're doing something that lights them up 
and teaches them how to think and how to communicate and how to work with others, that those, those are, it's really all about the transferable skills. Um, and that's what employers will state, like always, always, always. It really doesn't matter what you major in. It matters that you learn how to think and you learn how to speak. And yes, I mean, in today's digital age, a certain amount of technological you know, savvy and fluency is obviously going to, to be helpful. Um, but, but yeah, that's why I am just, I love exploring majors with students. I love helping them find programs they've never heard of. Even as I was updating slides for today, I, you know, I, I have about a dozen students I'm working with right now. And one is applying to law school. And I found at Rutgers was when I was uh, looking for some more majors for Wednesday Adams, there is a dual degree program that's labor relations and law school. And which is exactly what he wants to do. Um, so I just love learning, learning more about what's out there. I'm always discovering new things. So I'm kind of like the Indiana Jones of majors on the internet, or at least I like to think I am. So. <laughs> but thank you all so much for coming. I really appreciate your time. <laughs> thank you very much. And yeah. this and so fun to be able to go and dig up and figure out what things are available and what might actually tie into people's skills and interests. Yeah. What about you, Laura? Uh, well, I did costume design and a minor in studio art. And okay. I've used that, but then I also have become a curator. So that wasn't anything that I had to do. Or, right. And doing these talks had nothing to do with what I studied right. at all. Right. So you know, you, you use the skills you've got and you figure right. and hopefully learn some more as you grow. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, what I would say, Kim is with your son specifically, like, you know, I, I've had uh, plenty of students where they're like, I don't know. I don't know. I can't pin it down. Like, okay, let's not pin down to one. Let's come up with a top five and then a top three. And then we kind of start start searching around those, or if they can't even name that, I've also asked students, Hey, what is, um, what's one of your favorite books or essays or projects that you've had to do in school? Or if you can't think of that, like what's one of your favorite service projects? Like, and students sometimes think that their interests aren't academic, but mm. there are schools out there with comic studies majors and minors. Um, there are, you know, I have a student who is at Chapman with for computer science with a minor in game development because that is what he wants to do. Um, and so that's what we made sure he applied to and he's really happy. So yeah, you know, their hobbies can be academic interests. They just don't know it yet. Totally. Great. And what a great way to go. Great. Well, thank you so much. And I will see you all around and uh, make sure that you check out the other offerings of Genius Tea Time. And thank you so much for supporting. Phenomenal. Thank you so much. That was really lovely. And okay. appreciate to everybody who joined us and hope you come and see some future Genius Tea Times. Yes, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye now.